What can you tell me about this series? Ah, very good. I didn't expect that at all. But it's the harmonic series. Yes. Harmonic series. Good. What about its convergence or lack thereof? Does it converge or diverge? Diverges. So it diverges. How could you prove that? What are the different ways you could use to prove it? There's two that come to mind off the top of my head. P series. Good. How come the nth, nth term won't work? It only proves it's divergence. But you know what? It passes the nth term test. If you just take a look at the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n, it's 0. So it actually passes the nth term test, right? So it could converge or it could diverge. The nth term test does not tell you anything in this particular case. Um, what about the integral test? Could the integral test help us out here? Yeah, the integral test would also work. It would also show that it diverges. I think it took mathematicians, historically, it took them a long time to decide whether or not this converged or diverged. Now, what if I looked at that same series, except I made it alternate? Do you think that's going to change anything? In fact, it does. So you're going to get a little cancellation, because some terms are positive, some terms are negative. And they're going to kind of slowly cancel each other out. And I think we actually have uh, a total for this. Don't quote me. I think it's the natural log of 2 is what this total is up to. Not sure. We'll, have to, we'll figure it out later. But terms like this or series like this can converge because they alternate. And it's, it's another test for us. Woohoo! So that brings our total up to 8. All right. This is good. Uh, let's see. So we got eight, and I've got ten fingers, so that means after this we're going to need two more, right? So, okay. So the alternating series test. Alternating series test. So a series like this, sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times a sub n. This will converge, now I'm assuming that a sub n is greater than 0. This is going to converge if two things. First of all, the terms a sub n have to go to 0. So the limit has to go to 0. Limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals 0. And the second is that the terms are decreasing. So a sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to a sub n. The terms are monotonically decreasing. So it's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. If those two are true, then hey, great. We get something that converges. So let's see if we can apply this to a couple of series, starting with problem number 12. Problem 12 looks like this. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over the ln of n plus 1. So a couple things we need to check. Certainly this series alternates, 
The only reason that it might converge is because it is alternating. Without it alternating, you just have a log term in the denominator. And we know from our previous work that log terms don't do very well. They're a very slow growing function. They're slower than radicals. Certainly they're slower than your p's. Uh, n to the p's, your polynomials. So if it's less than n to the 1, it ain't going to converge. All right, but this one is all is alternating. So let's check a few things here. Let's check, first of all, the limit as, and this term is our a sub n, n approaches infinity of, let's just look at the absolute value part of this, 1 over ln of n plus 1. What's that limit going to equal? Zero. It's going to go to zero, right? You're going to have 1 over infinity. It's going to go to zero. So that's the first thing we got to check. The second thing we got to check is that these terms are decreasing. So let's compare a sub n to a sub n plus 1. a sub n, and we're not going to worry about the, the negative 1 to the n part. We're just worried about the a sub n part. So a sub n is going to be 1 over the ln of n plus 1. a sub n plus 1 is 1 over the ln of n plus 1 plus 1 again. To see what's going on here, when we go to the n plus first term, this term here, that didn't show up too good. Let me try it again. Um, this term here gets replaced by n plus 1. 1 over the ln of n plus 1, 1 over the ln of n plus 2. Which way is the inequality going to run? Which one's bigger than the other one? Yeah, this is going to be, um, that's going to be a smaller number, so it's going to give you a bigger quotient. Just think of it as, you know, division is kind of like sharing. You're sharing this with less friends than you are this, so each person gets a bigger slice. So we have that for our inequality. And you've, you've verified both parts of the AST, that is the alternating series test. So by the alternating series test, the series converges. Yay. So by the fact that it alternates, you got convergence, whereas a typical series like this, without that alternating, would not converge. <clears throat> Let's try problem number 16, unless there's some questions on problem number 12. Problem 16, kind of an ugly looking series here. Sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times ln of n plus 1 over n plus 1. Wow, a lot going on here. This one stands a chance of converging because the series alternates. Let's start with the first part. The first part is actually going to be the more challenging. So for the first part, we're not looking at this negative 1 to the n plus 1 term. Our a sub n is the stuff that multiplies that, so it's that little piece right there, that's going to be your a sub n. a sub n equals ln of n plus 1 over n plus 1. Let's look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the ln of n plus 1 over n plus 1. Suggestions on how to deal with this limit. Yeah, 
L'Hopital's rule. I mean, don't knock yourself out on this. I mean, you probably could find maybe some way, but nothing wrong with L'Hopital's rule. Now, when you're applying L'Hopital's rule, please don't use the quotient rule. All right? Make it simple on yourself, which is what L'Hopital's rule is. It's the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. So it's going to be the limit as n approaches infinity. Now, being really helpful, I'll do the derivative of the denominator. That's 1. All right. Who's got the numerator? It's not much harder. 1 over n plus 1. So this is the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n plus 1, which is 0. Cool. That is as required. Needed that limit to be 0. So there's a good chance that this will converge. We just got to show that this is decreasing. And you can see that by comparing uh, a sub n and a sub n plus 1. It's probably a, a bunch of ways you could use a derivative if need be, but let's see. Let's compare um, ln of n plus 1 over n plus 1. ln, what's the next term going to look like? ln of n plus 2 over n plus 2. Not really... Um, not really that easy. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. what do I do here? Uh, the plugging values of calculator kind of verifies it for some finite values, but I don't think it proves it. Um, uh, so let's see, what could we do here? Um, well, yeah, but we don't know, know necessarily the direction of the inequality. Um, if this is true, um, if it's true that um, this is bigger than this, then we should also be able to cross multiply. Um, Boy, I don't want to get into any derivatives if I don't have to, but it seems like I'm being pushed that way. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Derivative, let's see. A sub n. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to have to get back to you on this one. I'm not sure exactly what I would suggest you to prove. I mean, I can see a couple ways to do it, but none of them is looking really, really, um, really, really handy at the moment. I'll tell you what, let's just verify it this way. Let's look at the graph of this function. You know, that's actually maybe one way to do this um, is just by um, the derivative. Take a look at which intervals the derivative is uh, decreasing. So y equals the ln of x plus 1 divided by x plus 1. And, yeah, that function is going to be pretty flat. Let's um, square. So that, that is a decreasing function after a point. So after this point, the function is decreasing. And that's after n equals 2. So we are OK here. Um, I think you'd have to uh, differentiate this and you know actually solve there. All right, I'm a little hesitant to do that. Let me think about that one a little bit more and get back to you but I think that's the way you'd actually formally have to prove it. So, <clears throat> assuming this is true, though, and I think we can see from the graph that it is, assuming that's true, then this converges, the series converges by the ACT, or AST. n plus 1, ln of n plus 1 over n plus 1 converges. A 
AST is alternating series test. Now, um, some of these series only converge because they alternate. And we saw that at the very start of this section, that is with um, the harmonic series. The harmonic series converged because, or the alternating harmonic series converged, um, whereas the regular harmonic series diverges. Now, if your series converges even without it alternating, then that's a stronger condition. It's called absolutely convergent. So let's talk about a few different levels of convergence. We're going to talk about absolutely convergent and conditionally convergent. All right, so um, let's see. I don't want to write this. Uh, I don't want to write if. So this series is absolutely convergent. when this series converges as well. So the defined word here that you should be wading into is this. In other words, it doesn't matter if this thing is alternating or not. If you took a look at the absolute value of all these terms and it still converged, then that's a series that's absolutely convergent. If this converges and this series diverges, kind of like our harmonic series, the alternating harmonic series, um, then this series is conditionally convergent. So if the only reason that it converges is because it's alternating, then it's conditionally convergent. So an example of conditionally convergent, we've already done. Is this series, sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n. <clears throat> that one converges because it alternates. A sum that, uh, that's absolutely convergent, absolutely convergent, an example of something like that would be this one. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n squared. <clears throat> it doesn't matter whether or not this series alternates. If I just look at the absolute value of the terms of this series, not the whole series, but the, the individual terms, then I would get a series like this, 1 over n squared. How do I know that this one converges? It's a p-series. So this one is absolutely convergent because if you take the absolute value of each of these terms, you get this, but this itself is a convergent p-series. So you got conditionally convergent and absolutely convergent. <clears throat> Let's see if we can't classify a few of these series. We'll start with um, problem number 40. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 
Hmm. What do you think? Is a series like this, is that looking like it might be absolutely convergent or conditionally convergent, or is that divergent? What do you think? Those three things that can happen to these series. Let's start by looking at um, this term. Sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n plus 3. This is just getting rid of the alternating part. What's going to be true about that series? You think that's going to be a convergent series, a divergent series? Which one? Or how could you tell? How would you test it? Limit comparison test would work fine. Is there another test that would have worked pretty easy on this one? Nth term, it would pass. The nth term wouldn't tell you anything. That's, that's bothering you, isn't it? It's like, ugh. Don't, don't, don't use the nth term then. <laughs> uh, the nth term can only show divergence. All right? It can't show convergence. So this would actually pass the nth term, but you could use uh, direct comparison. Well, can we use the direct comparison? Now, let's, let's do the limit comparison test is the safe one. How about the integral test? Both of those would be easy tests. Now, if you're doing the limit comparison test, what series would be an easy thing to do with the limit comparison test? What should I use here? 1 over n. What do you know about the series of 1 over n? It's a harmonic series. Does it converge or diverge? Diverges. So if you did the limit comparison test with this one, you'd find out that this series diverges. All right, so you've got three possibilities for this series. It's either absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, convergent, or it diverges. What have we eliminated by this calculation here? It's not absolutely convergent. The absolute value of the sum of these terms, or the sum of the absolute value of these terms, does not converge. So it's not absolutely convergent. It still might be conditionally convergent. That's true. So if we look at these two terms, uh, the limit, or this, this term, Limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n plus 3 is 0. All right, so that one's good. The second part that we need to verify is, um, is a sub n greater than or equal to a sub n plus 1. Well, that would be 1 over n plus 3. That would be 1 over n plus 1 plus 3 or basically 1 over n plus 4. Now, is this greater than or less than this one? Which way should I write the inequality? Greater than. All right, because it's a smaller number, so it's going to be a bigger quotient. So both of these are satisfied. So this converges by the ACT test, ASC test. Wow. How about the AST? How about that? Convergent by the AST. Alternating series test. Comments on number 40 here. Okay. Uh, let's try problem number 46. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n 
over e to the negative n squared. Hmm. What would you do with this one? Again, you're going to have three choices. Absolutely convergent. Conditionally convergent or divergent. And you see I'm getting lazier here. I'm just abbreviating these things. I guess the first thing you could do and maybe should do would be look at something like this. Sum from n equals 1 to infinity. Well, just the absolute value of these. So they'd be e to the negative n squared. But now where? Um, well, let's rewrite it. Let's get rid of the negative exponent. It would be e to the n squared in the denominator. Um, and let's keep rewriting this a little bit until we strike gold. n equals 1 to infinity. Can anyone else see a different way I can rewrite this? How about if I write it like that? 1 over e squared to the n. Is that an improvement? That's a geometric series. Well done. That's a geometric series. Is it a convergent geometric series? Yeah. I mean, e squared, I think, is about 7.38. Not sure. But 1 over 7.38, that's going to be less than 1. So that's going to be a convergent geometric series. This is, is a convergent geometric series. <clears throat> you get, uh, you know, did I, did I read, write that wrong? Yeah, let's see. Um, oh, it's, n, yeah, it's, it's n squared, 2n. Yeah, rats. Um, all right. Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, let's see here. So it's n squared. Mm, that would have been nice. As long as a cheap metric series. Um, how can I write that? Let's see. So I'm n equals 1 to infinity. 1 over... Let's think. How do I... One over e to the n squared. Hmm. I'm not sure that that's a that's a recognizable form. Hmm. Be nice if this was a geometric series. Really nice. How is that going to work? Um. See, we already had, we got rid of the negative, n squared. And I can see that it's going to be convergent. But how do you prove it? Um, um, prove it with some of the stuff we have in the next section. But that's cheating now. Uh, where do you prove it? Just... No. What's that? Integrate. Integrate that one? Um, no. Actually, the integral of this one, the integral of this one is amazingly tricky. 
You can only do it if you're integrating from like negative infinity to infinity is when you can integrate that term. Um, and that one's, that one's kind of a nice trick, but that goes beyond us. My apologies here. Um, I didn't see this one coming. I didn't see a problem with that. Let's see. What's... Um, hmm. All right. Well, let's, let's take a look at all our tests. You've got the, the direct comparison test, which I don't think I want to use. Um, it's not a P-series. I don't want to integrate it. Um, I'm not sure what you'd use with the limit comparison test. Uh, it's not an alternating series because we're working on the absolute convergence. It's not a telescoping series. What else do we got? What else am I missing? Um, P-series, limit comparison test, direct comparison test, telescope series, geometric series, nth term test. It passes the nth term, so it may or may not converge. We just don't know. Pretty sure that this one exists. Um, hmm. One over e to the n squared. Did I copy this down right? Let's see. Problem forty-six. Yeah. Negative e to the e to the negative n squared. Uh, okay. That n squared e to the n n squared. That's true. Um. thinking of the, either the limit comparison test or the direct comparison test uh, with a geometric series. So let's use a geometric series here. And the geometric series that we could use is just 1 over e to the n. So our problem is that we have an n squared here. But this one doesn't have a squared, so that makes this a geometric series. n equals 1 to infinity. Um, if this converges, this one's going to converge by the direct comparison test. So I try and avoid the direct comparison test because it's a little bit tricky, but I think it works for us in this case. Why? Because this ratio is less than 1, so when you square it, it's going to be even smaller than this ratio. Since 1 over e to the n squared is going to be... Uh, less than 1 over e to the n, then the fact that this converges shows that this converges. So this converges by the direct comparison test. That one's a little bit harder than I would expect. Um, obviously, so I, I struggled with it a little bit. Um, be a little bit more careful on an exam than, than something that's going to be that much of a pain. The bottom line for us, though, is that this series up here converges. So if this series converges, what's our conclusion down here? If this series converges, even ignoring how we got that conclusion, if this series converges, what does that say about this series? It's absolutely convergent. So that's what I wanted to show eventually, is that this one is absolutely convergent. All right, I'm sorry I got turned around a, lot, a little bit on that one. Hopefully it gives you uh, faith and makes you feel a little better when you struggle as well. Whew. Okay, let's try a couple more. Um, 
problem number 48. I guarantee this one will work out a little bit nicer. Sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n to the 4 thirds. So let's work on this one. Same three choices. It's either going to be absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent. Now your first step in deciding that is to look at just the absolute value of those terms and the series that you get from that. So the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 4 thirds. And like I said, I really hope that this one's going to be a little bit easier than the last one. It should be. A couple ways you can do this one. What do you think? Convergent or divergent? Convergent. Why? What test can you use? P-series. Absolutely the easiest thing. P-series test. P is greater than 1. It converges. So this is a convergent P-series. So if that converges, what's my conclusion over here? Which kind of convergence? Absolute. Thank you. Absolute convergence. So if this one converges, this converges whether or not you use the negative terms doesn't matter. That one's just a convergent series. So it's a, it's a very strong uh, convergence. Okay. Problem number 50. sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n divided by the square root of n plus 4. Your three choices for these alternating series are absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent or divergent. And that's going to be true for all these series. Start out by examining the absolute value of this series. And I'm being a little bit loose in saying that, but it's really the absolute value of each of the terms. It's going to be 1 over the square root of n plus 4. Decide if that converges or diverges, and then move on to finish off the rest of this.
Okay, so if you look at uh, the available tests that we have for a problem like this, there's really seven of them. Let me just kind of remind you of those seven, and let's eliminate a few. So there's the nth term test. Well, you know what? It's going to pass the nth term test. The limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over the square root of n plus 4 is going to go to 0. So, all right, it passes the nth term test. That doesn't tell us it converges or diverges. It just says that it passes the nth term test. So that doesn't help us out. Almost looks like a p-series. It's not quite a p-series. So the integral test, if you're trying to integrate 1 over n square root of n plus 4, you can do that. That's not a problem. So you can use the integral test. Limit comparison test would work good. It's not a geometric series, so we can't use that one. It's not a telescoping series. Direct comparison test, yeah, sometimes when you're lucky, the signs work out in the right direction, but you have to be careful with that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, I've seen too many mistakes for me to really embrace you guys using the direct comparison test. It's just... Sorry, you're using, you know, infinity to prove that something else is zero. It just, ah, it just doesn't work. So let's try and work this with uh, the limit comparison test. This is pretty close to this series. N equals um, 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of N. Now, what do I know about this series? n to the one-half. Good. And what do I know about n to the one-half? Yeah, it's a divergent p-series. So this diverges. That's not really a whole lot different than this one. So start thinking that this one's going to diverge. So let's call this our b sub n. This is our a sub n. If we take a look at the limit as n approaches infinity, of a sub n over b sub n. That's going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over the square root of n plus 4 divided by 1 over the square root of n. Invert and multiply. So that gives me the limit as n approaches infinity of the square root of n over the square root of n plus 4. I saw a lot of people get down to here. I would think that the easiest way to proceed would be something like this. Let's write this as one big square root. And then we can manipulate things underneath the square root. If I divide out by the largest term in the denominator, this is Slav's trick, so um, limit as n approaches infinity, I'll get the square root of 1 over 1 plus 4 over n. And now I can just plug in the limit, right? I'll get the square root of 1 over 1 plus 0, which is 1. The important thing out of this is that this is finite and positive. It's between infinity and 0. Therefore, um, since this diverges, this diverges. Um, therefore, this series, sum of n equals 0 from 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of n plus 4, diverges. Wow, that's kind of a pain because we did a lot of work just to scratch this off our list. All right? That's all we've shown is that it's not absolutely convergent. <laughs> yeah. You're like, really? We're not done with this one? Can I have the oxygen bottle? <laughs> all right. All right. Um, well, let's finish it up then. If it's conditionally convergent, then a couple things have to happen. And I think the first one of them is pretty easy. Actually, I think they're both pretty easy. Uh, the first one is the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over the square root of n plus 4, 
what does that limit have to be and what is that limit? In order for this to be conditioned convergent, this limit has to be zero. And it is zero. So we got that going for ourselves, which is nice. Second part, 1 over the square root of n plus 4, 1 over the square root of n plus 1, plus 4. Which way does the inequality run? Which term is bigger? Dividing by a bigger number or dividing by a smaller number? Which one's going to give me the bigger quotient? Dividing by the smaller number. So it works that way. So this is my a sub n. This is my a sub n plus 1. And when your terms are decreasing like that, then great. It's a de monotonically decreasing. has a limit of 0. This is conditionally convergent by the alternating series test. Conditionally convergent by the AST. Whew. All right. So you eliminate absolutely convergent, then you look for this one. If it's conditionally convergent, great. If it's not, then it's just divergent, period. All right, let's change things up just a little bit here. Um, let's start looking at something called the remainder theorem. So it's going to start with problem number 28. Sum from n equals n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times 4 over the natural log of n plus 1. Now, without actually going through this, I'm pretty sure that this series is conditionally convergent. It's not absolutely convergent because you're going to have a natural log term in the denominator. It does decrease and it does alternate, so it will be a conditionally convergent series. But the problem is to approximate this and then figure out how good your approximation is. So they want us to approximate this by summing up the first six series or first six terms of this series. Wow, it's kind of a, a little bit of a pain. So it means you have to plug in n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, all the way up to 6, and then add them all up. I'm not really feeling inclined to do that by hand. Uh, maybe we can list them out. So for n equal 1, it would look like this. Negative 1 to the 1 plus 1, it's really negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. So I'll get 4 over the ln of 2. For the next term, n equal 2. Well, if I put in a 2 here, I'll have negative 1 to an odd power, so I'll get a minus 1. So it'll be minus and 4 over the ln of 3, and so on. And I need the first six terms like this. Now this is just an approximation, maybe it's a good one, maybe it's not, of what the sum is for the overall series. If you're summing this up by hand or even on a computer, if you're trying to figure out, well, what does that really add to? Well, unfortunately, we have finite lives, right? 
you can't sum out to infinity. At some point, you got to quit. And at that point that you quit, whatever you didn't add, that's your error. How much of an error did you make? What's, what's the size of that error? Well, there's good news for us, and that's our remainder theorem. The error that you make is smaller than the, the first term that you leave off. So let me see if I can't find it here in our uh, book. Uh, remainder. There you go. So this is on page 621. Basically, it's saying the error that you make. So S is the actual true sum. S sub n is the sum of the first n terms. So the difference between the true value and what you got by using the first n terms, that remainder is less than the first term you left off. So, cool. What that means is that whatever this totals up to, call it S sub 6, this total overall, call it S, the difference between these two is less than the seventh term. That only works because it's an alternating series. Now, we can add this up. Uh, we can do it by brute force, or I can show you some, some tricks. Uh, looking at your demeanor now, maybe I should just do it by brute force instead of trying to show you some tricks. Um, let's figure out what the sum is. So, let's see here. 4 divided by the ln of 2 minus 4 divided by the ln of 3 plus 4 divided by the ln of 4. Uh, I forgot a parenthesis here. Minus 4 divided by the ln of 5. plus 4 divided by the ln of 6, minus 4 divided by the ln of 7. So that's my approximation to the total of this series. is about 2.706. Now how far could I be off? I mean, am I close? Am I far? I could be off by as much as the next term. So the next term would be 4 divided by the ln of 8. So I could be off by a fair ways. If I wanted to have a good approximation of this series, I actually should go out a lot, lot farther until this term was sufficiently small for my needs. Now there are ways that you can get your calculator to, to do some of that stuff. Um, if you're interested in, in that, come ask me. But let's use this remainder theorem to do a couple more problems. Um, problem 32. And we will use a little technology here, although it's nothing that I don't think we've already done. Sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over 2 to not two. How about n squared? There we go. Let's make that look like an n squared. Now the goal in this one is to list enough terms so that our approximation for this total is within one one thousandth. So I want S minus S sub N less than 0 0.001. Let me show you the, the clever way to do that. Basically, we got to keep on looking at these terms until we get to the point that we've got a term that's less than 1 1,000th. And that's the first term that we can leave off. Take out your graphing calculators. Let's enter in this expression without that minus 1 stuff into our calculators. 
So I'm not going to be really fancy about it. It's just going to be 1 divided by x squared. Now you remember how to do a table? We've set up our tables, right? Let's just double check that our tables have the right setting. Hit the second button, then the window setting. Independent should be set to ask. If it's not, cursor down, and then over, press enter. That's on your table setting, second window. When that's set, hit the second key, then the graph key, and this will give you a table. And basically, we want to keep on plugging in numbers until you find something that's less than one one thousandth. So, um, obviously, these aren't getting in anywhere fast enough, so let me start with, like, uh, 15. No, not big enough. Uh, let's try 18. No, nope. 20. Closer. How did I get it to a decimal? It just if if you if you use this right here, um, let me go back here. Let me show you. If I did alpha and then the y equals key, if I did this trick, one over x squared, then it's probably going to give it to me as a fraction. So let's take a look at our table now. Yeah. On the one hand, it gives me a decimal. On the other hand, it gives me a fraction. So, yeah, so be careful about that. Uh, let's try 25. Not quite, but we're getting closer. Um, 28. 30. 31. 32. Ah, finally a winner. Notice what's happening at 32. You finally got a number that's bigger than 1,000, so this number is less than 1 1,000th. 1, so 32 is the first term that you can leave off. If I wanted to approximate this series and get something that was reasonably close, then I could say, all right, you know what? That's approximately the sum from n equals 1 to 31 of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n squared. I used to teach this as, okay, well, we'll solve for that, but you know what? Technology's made it pretty easy just to, to plug and chuck. You could actually solve, probably wouldn't be all that bad, for 1, win over n, 1 over n squared is less than 0 0.001. You can do that. That's what you're really looking for. So it's the sum of the first 31 terms that gives you a decent approximation. Let's try that one one more time. Um, I don't think it's going to require as many terms for problem number 34. Sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1, or no, negative 1 to the n, over 2n factorial. So again, this is an alternating series. If we're going to approximate this so that the error between our approximation and the actual series is less than some number, like 0.01, we need to find out how far do I go before I get that term. We're going to do this the same way we did with the last one. Quick quiz for you. Do you remember where to find the exclamation point? Where's that factorial symbol? Yeah, math and then probability. So 1 divided by parentheses 2x parentheses, then hit the math key, and then cursor over to probability. The fourth option down is your factorial. Now we should be in good shape. All right. These are way bigger than I need to go, so let me delete all these old values and start plugging in values anew until I get far enough down the chain. Um, two doesn't work. Three is getting closer. How many terms do I need to go? So 
So 4, remember what that represents. This is 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. All right, 2.48 times 10 to the negative fifth. 2.48 times 10 to the negative fifth. That's what that E negative 5 stands for. So this is really 0 0.00024. And I got that at n equal 4. So, wow. This series is getting close to 0 really, really fast. After four terms, you're only adding less than 1 ten thousandth to this. So, if I wanted to approximate this, I could use the first three terms. Sum from n equals 1 to 3 of negative 1 to the n over 2n factorial. And this approximation would be good to within less than a ten thousandth. That's remarkably fast. It's a very fast converging series. Okay, for homework, try 1 through 21, 27 through 53, and 71 through 79. So these, these last handful, they're a good review set. So when you're doing these things at home, you know, on the test, I'm just going to give you a bunch of random problems. And that's exactly what those problems are. They're just a bunch of random problems asking you, all right, use the integral test or the P test or the geometric series test. So this is ideal to study from because it's exactly what you were asking before earlier as just problems in a random order. Well, what's the numbers again? 53. All right, so that's section um, 9.5. Let's take a break.